Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today, we are playing some more Arnie Broken Brow. Can we live up to the legend this game? I don't know, it didn't happen yet. Looking at our opening hand, we do have some mass removal, potentially good, Trailblazer's Boots, Mog Maniac. Still missing some lands though. I don't know that I want to risk this, so let's go ahead and take a mulligan. New hand, down to one land. I have worked on this deck in between games. I added three more lands, I believe. So this is still quite concerning. We're going to take another mulligan. New hand. Four lands, Mog Fanatic is back. Sorry, Mog Maniac. Totally getting that wrong. A braid's nice. Skull Clamp is pretty good. I think we can keep this. At this rate, though, do we want to discard a land? Yeah, I think we do. Let's go ahead and bop the Ghost Quarter down to the bottom there. I would want to keep the Ghost Quarter, but getting this early, if I want to crack it against something, it might not be the best. So, don't want to be tempted. Our commander is a 2 red 3 3 legendary human berserker haste with boast 1. You may change its base power to 1 plus the greatest power among other creatures you control to end of turn. Activate this ability only if this creature attack this turn and only once each turn. So we have a lot of big guys in our deck. Vivid Crag for our first opponent who happens to be Animar Soul of Elements. Green, blue, red for a legendary 1 1. Elemental. Protection from white and black. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put 1 1 counter on it. And creature spells that you cast cost 1 less to cast for each 1 1 counter on Animar. Our next opponent, Rith the Awakener. I haven't seen this in forever. Three red, green, white for legendary 6-6 six, six, dragon. I wonder if they'd be elder dragons now. I don't think so. In either case, flying, whenever it does common damage to the player, you may pay two and green. If you do, choose a color, then create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token for each permanent of the chosen color. And for reference, since the saps are green, you can pick green after you hit once or twice, and it makes those all count towards the green in case you're unfamiliar with the mechanics there. A Mary of the Sky Ruin into play for them. That's going to be kind of awkward in a three-color deck. Interesting. Comes our turn, we get a mountain. Let's go ahead and play it. And do we want to get down Skull Clamp now? No, I don't think we do. Let's just pass it off. Because even if we put down Mog Fanatic, it's there more for, like, board wipes and blocking. I don't necessarily want to kill the Fanatic, or the, man the Maniac. I don't know why I keep calling it Fanatic. In either case, do that later. We have a Lumbering Falls into play. Is this? Yeah, this is the Manland, all right. And our last opponent is Tatiova Benthic Druid. Three green blue for a legendary 3-3 Miracle Druid. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life and draw a card. All right, ooh, Vivid Creek into play for Animar. I do like the Vivid Lands, they're fine. Rith's turn, Reliquary Tower into play. To our turn, we get Rogue's Gloves. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play that this turn. No creatures down yet for the Mog Maniac, so. Why not? Alright, and we'll pass it off. Get down our commander next turn. Usually I want to save my commander till later through the extra playtesting I did, but it doesn't look like we're getting any other action for now, so we'll get him down, swing, next turn, equip stuff, swing. Two Tatiova. If you've ever played against the Tatiova deck, or any landfall deck, you know the value is going to be very good. I'm actually still considering taking my Omnath apart and making it just green just to lower its power level. Because landfall decks are obnoxiously good these days. Just a farce in play for Tati over this turn. Rolling over to Animar. Animar with the farce into play. They have all the colors to summon the elemental. And they do so. Rolls over to Rith's turn. Tapping down some mana. Mana rock, hopefully. Oath of Lieges. Oh, not these again. Okay, so this one is the lands, correct? Yep. So at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player... Oops. Galvany Township into play, apparently. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses a target player who controls more lands than them. The first player may search their library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle their library. Doesn't come into play tapped, which is nice. Alright, so it triggers for us. Let's go ahead and select Animar. Why not? Go get a land. We get Fling. That'll be good if we get something big. Let's go ahead and play our commander. Tell me the tale of Arnie Broken Brow. 
All right, let's swing into Animar since they have something up. See if they want to trade. Well, or block, chump block it, I guess. I doubt they will. So, three free damage, most likely. Yep, damage is good. Let's pass it off. Animar down to 37, up to three commander. I will note, and you may have noticed, I neglected to play a land on that turn. That was on purpose. Playing with Oath of the Lieges out is going to get us our land drops generally anyway, especially against Tatiova. But until Tatiova starts ramping, I don't want to play any of the lands in my hand yet to try to bluff out my opponents. I mean, that works a lot better in person, but I want to try it out here. Last time I played against Oath of the Lieges, I messed up a lot, and I felt like I should have played the lands a little bit more conservatively, so we'll see how things go. Tatiova's turn lands in play with Tempt with Discovery. Well, there goes some of the planning I was just explaining down the toilet. Let's see how things go. So it does look like the Animar player is choosing to take up the tempting offer. <sighs> so that means we most likely will also have to. With the Tempt with Discovery things, it's kind of a everybody's in or everybody's not. Because then you just fall kind of too far behind. So might as well pull something out of the deck at that rate. Maybe a Rogue's Passage. We do have lands. Maybe a Temple of the False God. We don't have any of the high drops though. And there's an Oath of Lieges out. So I'm really leaning towards that Rogue's Passage. Yep, there's Guy's Cradle. I mean, we could get Ghost Quarter too. Uh, and we probably will need to get Ghost Quarter. So let's go ahead and get that. Tatiova will now get three additional lands for their battlefield. Wide Woodland for more landfalls. Early Quarry Tower and Misty Rainforest for more landfalls. Tatiova has all the landfall set up. Two ammo's turn, both trigger. On the bright side, Tatiova has way more lands than this, so now we can start playing some of the lands from our hand. That's good, I guess. Hopefully we draw some of our larger things now. Animar picks Forest, and it goes into play. Eight cards in hand after the draw. Command Tower coming down. Rurik Thar the Unbowed. Wow, six damage for a Skull Clamp. That's not my favorite. Hmm, not even close. Rook Thar into play. So my problem here is Rith is most likely got a decent number of creatures in it, and Tatiova is mostly probably just lands and creatures. That's not to say that they aren't necessarily, but they could be. And we're off on the attack into us. Some uh, retribution there, that's fine. We take two, damage is good. Down to 38, up to two commander damage. Rith has a forest come into play for them as well. Still missing some red for their commander, but they do have other ways to get mana, I would surmise. V2 Gazi into play. Alright. So that'll make a token. Mirari's Wake. Alright. And it's the old school one, too. So they get double the mana now. That's not fun. Rukthar will trigger and deal 6 damage to him, however. Rolls over to our turn. Oath trigger. Let's go get a land. And for our turn, we get Porphyros Bronze Blooded. That'll be good later. Not so much right now. Let's play a land for the turn this time. And let's go ahead and do the Mog Fanatic. Maniac. Uh, I'll get that right eventually. Let's equip the Rogue's Gloves to Broken Brow and start a swinging. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's swing into Rift this turn. Next turn, we'll go ahead and go on over to Tatiova, assuming they don't launch a giant big creature at us. See how it goes from there. We make a connection. Down to 31 for Rith, up to 3 commander. Rogue's Glove will trigger. Let's go ahead and draw a card. We get Brass Squire. Okay. Huh. Let's pass it off for now. Let's read Mirari's Awake. Add 1 mana. Okay, so Guy's Cradle will tap for 1 extra. I was going to say, had it actually doubled? Um, yeah, Guy's Cradle would need to die. Right now, Guy's Cradle doesn't do anything, though. To Tatiova's turn. It is Tatiova coming down for that player. Misty Rainforest gets the crack. They're going to go get a forest or an island card. It's a tropical island into play. Yeah, that'll work out. Tatiova triggers. Another land into play for the turn. Oron Reef the Vastwood being activated. One one card each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. That would be Tatiova only. Both trigger and more has an island to come into play. Rattleclaw Mystic. So it has morph and it's a Tamir card. All right, so when it's turned face up, they can add three mana, but it looks like they're playing it face up, so nothing wrong there. Probably just trying to get more counters on Animar itself. Savage Knuckleblade also coming down. All right, that'll be three counters on Animar. They can now play Morphs for free. Savage Knuckleblade will gain haste till end of turn, and in case you're unfamiliar with it, 
It's a 4 4 for green, blue, red. Two in green, it gets 2 2 till end of turn. Activate this ability only once. Two in blue, return it to your hand or red, it gains haste. He'll also get 2 2 till end of turn. Let's see where it's going to smack somebody. Attacks are declared. Two six sixes off into Tatiova. Animar itself going off into Rith. Damage is good everywhere. Tatiova down to 29. Rith up to 4. Commander down to 27. Rith with the Oath Trigger gets a Mountain into play. They now cast their Commander if they want to. Six cards in hand after the draw. Realm Seekers that enters the battlefield put X1 on it where X is total number of cards in all players' hands. Nice. Two in green. Hey, I was reading that. Two in green, remove a 1-1 one, one card from it, search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. That's also very, very big. Very big indeed. Although if they attack us, we could potentially throw that damage somewhere else with the Mog Fanatic. Might not mind that too much. Need to keep chat open, keep an eye on it, look for any deals to be made. Rith takes a counter off the Realm Seekers, they'll go get a land. Oh, by the way, it's an elf for all those elf decks coming around these days. There you go. The land they get is Five Sons of Trarkir? Trarkir? Yeah, legendary land too. Frontier Guide coming down for the Rith player. Another elf. Followed by Smothering Tithe, Relic Thar will trigger. Ooh, Smothering Tithe. Comes to our turn. Let's see, we only have six lands. Yeah, I think we're fine there. Let's go ahead and select Rith. Get you another snow covered mountain out of our deck. Let's see what we draw for the turn. It's Angrath's Marauders. That's nice. That's very nice. Especially if we block with the Mog Fanatic, then we can deal double the damage. I like that a lot. Let's play a mountain for the turn. And then I think I want to get down Porphyro so we can kind of like flash in Angrath's Marauders in case we need to block something. That way Mog Maniac, and then just we'll block and then it's over for somebody. I think I like that plan a lot. So let's go ahead and do that. I have just enough mana left over for activation. Unfortunately, there's nowhere we can swing right now, so I guess we're just passing the turn. Playing into play for Tatiova. That's life, that's draw, that's probably another treasure for Rith, it is. Jin Gitoxis Core Augur. Uh-oh. That's... Hmm. That's, uh... It's not my favorite. So, in case you're unfamiliar with Jin Gitoxis, 8 blue blue for a legendary 5-4 Praetor. Flash at the beginning of your end step, draw seven cards. Each opponent maximum hand size is reduced by seven, which means we'll have to discard everything at our end step. Sorry, I guess I clean up stuff. Public enemy number one, Tatiova. I do not consider Jenga Taxis a casual card, because for me personally, for casual play, my number one rule is people get to play magic. And yes, you can de deny them some resources. I'm fine with like acidic slimes or ghost quarters. I'm fine with everybody discards a card, you know? I'm not fine with you can't play some aspect of the game in its entirety. The highest I get with that is like the third Teferi, where you can't play stuff except on your own turn. That's as far as I'm willing to go, because you still get to play, but it's only on your turn. That's that's like the height of where I'm willing to go in casual. So Jenga Texas denying us our entire hand all the time is not something I consider casual. You can let me know if you have a different opinion in the comments, maybe change my mind. I'm always open to having my mind changed. In either case, back to the game. Ruik Thar is doing the things. Grand Warlord Rada coming down for them. Stonehoof Chieftain. Uh, they're going all in, huh? Can they give it haste, though? Stonehoof Chieftain is good. Also need to reprint. It's only been printed once. 7 green for an 8-8 eight eight with Trample Indestructible, and whenever another creature you control attacks, it gains Trample and Indestructible to end a turn. So it itself does not have to attack, which is what makes it very good. So, yeah, pick one up if you can, otherwise it is a bit expensive in paper. Savage Noko Blade is getting 2-2 two two till end of turn. They add 3 green and 2 red to their mana pool. It doesn't empty as steps and phases end this turn. All right, so let's see. We have Animar and Ruikthar at us. And everything else going off into Rith. Do we want to block and then summon Angrath's Marauders? Uh, no, I think we'll just take the 12 here. Unfortunately, six of it will be Commander. But I feel it's best if we leave just, like, maybe one more turn. Get to our next turn. Play some stuff, perhaps. Probably get down Angrath's Marauders. Okay, so Animar, discard a forest and a mountain. So that's all they had. 
Oath of Legions will trigger for Rith. I don't know that they can get any lands. Do they? Have, does somebody have more lands than they do? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. I guess someone did. All right, land into play. Realm Seekers is being activated. I was just going into chat. I was considering asking the Rith player if they'll swing at me with the 22-22, and I'll block with the Mog Fanatic, pull Feroz in, and Gross Marauders, and possibly kill one of our opponents. Of course, the problem being then we have another opponent to deal with somewhere. The Ruik Thar, or the Animar player rather, but Ruik Thar also, is really hard to deal with without board wipe. Tatiova is still probably the most dangerous just because we have to discard our entire hand and it's probably locked down. I don't, I don't want to do that necessarily to one player, but I also don't want to just kick the bucket over and have nothing happen. So I think I'm going to make that deal. Okay, tentative deal. Rith says, okay. I don't know if they're just acknowledging what I said or if they're actually going to attack me. We'll see. This is not a maneuver I particularly like to do, but again, my first rule of magic is people get to play magic. So going to do what I can here. Realm Seekers being activated again. On the bright side, they could bring it down to a 15-15 and we still have a good deal here. I just hope that they don't... If they activate it like two more times to get lands, I'll tell them like, hey, look, attack me with it first, but we'll see how things go. We have Gamble, Rook, Thar, the Unbowed will trigger. Rith down to 10. This is going to be much more a Kingmaker situation for the Amar player. I'm not much looking forward to that. I'm hoping they're going to go get a board wipe with that gamble and hopefully be able to keep it. Oh, and they discard Wrath of God. Oh, I bet that's what they gambled for too. That sucks. Yeah, that's what they got. Sad face. So we can also fling our Angrath's Marauders at Ruik Thar and possibly kill it. So I'm also looking forward to that. We're going to be taking a lot of damage though. Rith the Awakener coming down for that player. Bazaar of Baghdad. Again, Bazaar of Baghdad. What is with this card? I know it's it's card selection. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's all that's happening. Let me know in the comments. This is like the fourth, fifth, sixth time I've seen it this week. All right, so they discard Dronyard Temple, Seasons Past, and leave it to chance. Okay. A Maria Shepherd Landfall. They get to return something to their hand from the graveyard. Unless it's planes, then it goes straight to the battlefield. It's a very nice landfall card. Okay, to the attacks. Let's see if they attack me with the Realm Seeker. They do. Sweet. All right, so in response, let's activate Apophoros. Get down Angrith's Marauders. And Pulphros actually becomes active for a little bit here. Let's go to blocks. Block with the Mog Maniac. Damage is good. And we'll take out the Titania or the Tatiova player. Again, not something I necessarily like doing, but gotta. And they're down with negative 12. Second main phase for Rith. The Tatiova player was very civil in chat. They just said good game. So I appreciate that. It's, uh, again, I, it doesn't feel good. But I also want to play Magic, so... Eh, definitely a gray space. Creator's Council. Ruik Thar will trigger again. So, yeah, Animar in a very good position to take out the Rith player. Rith down to four after Creator's Council. They get all the stuff in their graveyard back to their hand and have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. I think this is an undervalued card. But green's so redundant these days, you don't usually need it. End of turn, Angress Mirage will kick the can. It's too bad. Oath trigger, let's choose Rith. Go get a land. Snow Covered Mountain into play, we will not pay for the tithe. Okay, Rogue Thar is still out. We do have Bloodshot Cyclops, it's not going to do much for us though. We don't have any of our large creatures just yet. Could get down also the Brass Squire just to have some extra blocks, but I don't know if anything's going to really help us at the moment. Play the Bloodshot Cyclops. Good for tossing stuff, another fling effect. And then, I guess we'll play the Brass Squire. Well, actually, no. We could take six to the Skull Clamp, but then we could probably be overrun. Uh, well, they all gain Trample and Indestructible anyway over on Animar's side. So, I don't think taking the extra damage right now is the best. Let's go ahead and do Brass Squire. Pass off the turn, unfortunately. Ancient Ziggurat into play on Animar's turn. So, if it's an old creature deck, that'll be good. It's also good as a one of if you have a lot of creatures anyway. Savage Knuckle Blade is getting the boost. Animar to the attacks. They could potentially finish us off, I'm thinking. As long as they do all the attacks right. However, Rift does have two very large defenders. So we might be out of this game. But I don't know about Rift. 
All right, bunches of triggers. Let those resolve, and then we'll see where everything's going. All right, let's see where everything's going. Ruikthar. We're also taking the Mana Dork. Rada. And the Stonehoof Chieftain. Yeah, that's a lot. We have Rith on the interception against the Savage Knuckleblade. It'll be just enough to kill it. Rith is currently a 7-7 due to the Murari's Wake. Oh, where's this one going? All right, so this one's against Amar, Frontier Guide. Okay, the Amar does have Trample from the Stonehoof, so they'll only be absorbing two damage. They will potentially still die. They do need to throw that Amiri Shepherd in front of it. No, I guess they aren't. Okay. Uh, what do we want to do here? We have a lot of stuff coming at us, unfortunately. Their guys are tapped out. Our guys will have haste regardless. Let's double block Arn er, with Arnie and the Bloodshot against Ruikthar. Make sure we can cast our other stuff. Use the Brass Squire to absorb some other damage. Could take out the Mana Dork. Yeah, let's go ahead and take out the Mana Dork. Uh, are they keeping Arnie alive? That'd be fantastic. Then we don't have to recast him necessarily. Yep, Rith goes down at exactly zero. All right, damage is good to us. Otherwise, 15 we are down to. Second main phase for the Amor player. Unfortunately, we can't get, uh, like, Blasphemous Attack or anything right now. That is very unfortunate. Knuckle Blade back to their owner's hand. Then they'll probably recast it, get another counter on Animar. Yep, there it is. Savage Knuckle Blade coming back to the battlefield. And they'll bounce it back again, recast it for some more counters. Hopefully not going to randomly draw into an Eldrazi. That would be both traumatic and unfortunate. Okay, they don't recast it. That's nice. Comes our turn. We get a, we get a land. Yeah, that's not helpful at all. Let's go ahead and play it. All right. Uh, with Rukthar having Vigilance, that's just very, very bad for us. So I think at this point, we can cast Cold Clamp, take six down to nine, equip it, attack with Arnie Broken Brow. Hope they block it. And... If not, we can always fling and take six more damage and desperately try to get a board wipe. But then it's kind of like a long slog. I think we might be in a slightly better position, depending. Let's go ahead and try it, though. Otherwise, we have we lose the game if we don't try anything. Rogue Thar will trigger. We take six. We are down to nine. Let's go ahead and equip the Skull Clamp to Arnie. And two attacks. He is now a 4-2. Swing the chain. No blocks. We get Rogue's Gloves trigger. We get to draw a card. They're down to 33. Up to 7 commander. We get smoke. That would be really good if they didn't have vigilance. Could still potentially be good. This is a card that, uh, since I was mentioning people get to play magic earlier, this is a card... I don't necessarily use in almost any deck. I thought it would be good in here though because it's kind of Tron-esque and we need something like that in Silent Arbiter to defend ourselves. So I, I consider it more of a pillow fort than this, but it's the only effect like it in here. Let's go ahead and cast Fling on our commander, pick a target, we'll go ahead and pick the enemy player, and we'll sacrifice Arnie Broken Brow. Couple of triggers to the stack, we'll put Arnie back in the command zone shore. We'll take six more from Rurik Thar. That's unfortunate. We will go down to three. We will draw two cards from the Skull Clamp Trigger. We get Commander's Plate and Ilharg. That's unfortunate. Fling will deal four damage to our opponent. Okay, at this point, we'll cast Ilharg and pass off the turn. Nothing else we can do here. Two Animars turn, two cards in hand after the draw. Let's see what they do to us. They could just attack. Emoti, Sovereign of Bounty. Suppose you cast with converted mana cost 6 or greater, have Cascade. Yep, Cascade's fun. Emoti itself does have Cascade. Let's see what they Cascade into. It's Rorn Primadox. At the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Alright, so a little bit of the self-bounce, making a theme in the deck. Savage Knuckleblade coming back down. Animar gets ever bigger. Savage Knuckleblade gets the boost. We have an immediate attack with Ruik Thar. Let's see if they just swing with everything able. Yep, looks like it. And there are the triggers. No kill like overkill, I suppose. All right, there's uh, no reason to really block with anything here. Brass Squire and Ilharg, I'll just let them live. They can roam free on whatever plane I'm on. Uh, probably to the the uh, detriment to its denizens, now that I think about it. But in either case, we'll let them have it. 
And there's the victory. Down to negative three. We go up to 18, Commander. Okay. So, who do I want to give it to, though? I think I'm going to give it to the Tatiova player. They weren't salty about the loss or anything at all. So, I'm going to give it to them. Hey, we get a point. Winner gets three. Tatiova gets the one we gave him. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. All right, here's the deck. Unfortunately, we did not see many of our heavy hitting higher end drops. Really unfortunate. The deck kind of really wants those, and we want to, like, fling damage at things and whatever. However, Mog Maniac did make an appearance, even though I kept saying it was Mog Fanatic. Get those two confused all the time. I don't know why. They're Mogs, yes, but they're not entirely the same. So, don't know. In either case, I made some major changes to the deck. I took out almost all of the stealing effects because it was just extra mana, and then we attack with Arnie, and there's still other blockers and stuff. It just wasn't working out. So I took those out, put in some other stuff, put in like Hammer of Nizan, and uh, Solemn Simulacrum, get some more mana out. Cosmos Elixir, just because it's in block and I want to try it. The Scry alone could be pretty good. Still at four mana, though, I don't think it's a very great card. Still trying it out, though. Put in other effects like Stuffy Doll so we can re redirect damage. Brash uh, Taunter just so we can do that again. As far as like lockdown effects though, I do have Eurobrash the Hidden. I have Smoke. War Cadence I guess you could consider sort of a thing. I also run Blood Sun. I do not run Blood Moon because that shuts people out of a lot of their colored mana. And that's kind of like, that's a little bit of a step too far. I might also take out Smoke because of that. Smoke is one of those cards I really like in theory but not so much in practice necessarily. In this deck, it's more akin for me, like Silent Arbiter, like I said, but it might be a bit too strong because we don't have a lot of defenses. I'm still testing it out, so bear with me. Again, my first rule of magic is people get to play magic, and I don't have a problem with, say, Stonehorn Dignitary, but I don't know. Where You can let me know what you think about Smoke in the comments below. Like, where would you straddle that line there? Okay, on to the next game for Army Broken Brow. I mean, we pulled off some interesting things with the deck. I don't know that any of them have been as epic as Arnie has in his stories, but hopefully in the next game we can live up to the legend. Welcome back to Dural Magic. Today we're playing some more Arnie Broken Brow. Looking at our opening hand, we have enough lands. I also want to try out the Commander's Plate, so I am going to keep it just so I can <laughs> to have protection from the other four colors. Noticeably not from red though, which is very good for Soul's Fire. So we're going ahead and keep this, see where it goes. Hope we draw something other than lands this game, but we'll again, we'll see. Our commander, two red for a legendary 3-3 three, three human berserker, haste, boast, one. You may change its base power to one, plus the greatest power among other creatures you control till end of turn. Activate this only if it attacked and only once each turn. We have a scoop mob and a forest in play for our first punt, who happens to be Tattoo of a Benthic Druid. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under their control, they give them a life to draw a card. 3-3 three, three for a legendary Merfolk Druid. 3 green and blue. We are second, so that's nice. Krenko, that'll be even better. Let's go ahead and play Mountain, pass it off to our opponents. Commander's Plate costs 1 to get down and 3 to equip. So we can play Arnie, attack, get down Plate and equip it, and then attack, and it should be really good for us. Our next opponent is Morphon the Boundless. 7 for a legendary 6-6 six, six shapeshifter, changeling, it's every creature type. They have a misty rainforest come into play and crack it. Winner is the battlefield, choose a creature type. Spells of the chosen type cost Wooburg Glust to cast. This effect only reduces the amount of colored mana spent to pay them. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get 1-1. One, one. Tropical Island into play, followed by a soul ring. That's gonna be pretty fast. Yep, that's it for them. They're going to pass it to our next opponent. Who happens to be Carador, Ghost Chieftain. 5 white, black, green for legendary 3 4 centaur spirit. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard, and during your turns, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. Forest in play for them. 2 Tati of its turn. We have a Lotus Cobra coming down after an island. Yep, Lands Matter is a deck. Who would have guessed? Lands Matter decks are very obnoxiously strong these days. I might even turn my Omnath into a mono green one. We have Scoop Mob on the attack off into us, that's fine. We take one damage, we go down to 39. We get Mask of Memory. That's nice. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and play that down. And we'll pass it off to our opponents. So this one says, whenever a equipped creature does combat damage to a player, draw two cards if you do discard a card. So it's nice that we're getting some card draw along with Arnie Broken Brow this game. Marsh Flats into play for Morphon. It gets the crack. 
Hollowed Fountain. Into play tapped. Followed by Confounded Conundrum. Okay. So it's an enchantment. When there's a battlefield draw a card, whenever a land enters the battlefield under opponent's control, <laughs> if that player had another land enter the battlefield under their control this turn, they return a land they control to their owner's hand. Oh, and Tatiova just straight up quits the game. See, I would have tried to work around that to my advantage. I mean, you could just, as long as you get a bunch of land plays, you're not ramping, but you can still get those landfall triggers, so... I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, you usually want to do that yourself anyway. Lot with Troll coming down for Carador. I haven't seen that in forever. Great card for discarding effects. Just a great card. To our turn, we get Hand War Battlements. Sweet, give haste to some other stuff. Let's go ahead and get down our commander, and we'll go ahead and swing into the Morphon player. Or do we want a certain character? No, let's go ahead with Morphon, because otherwise if we're killing their creatures, we need to do it kind of like in a more major sweep so they get, don't get the cost reduction on Carador. That's what I'm thinking anyway. To the attacks. Off into Morphon. Damage is good. They're down to 35, up to 3 commander. Pass it off to him. Morphon's turn with a planes into play. They have 5 mana available. Let's see what they're going to do with it. Hour of Promise, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Then if you control three or more deserts, you get two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. They get the World Tree and Crows and Verge. Hmm. The World Tree does not fill me with confidence in our victory at all. Especially if it's like a god tribal kind of thing. Not the best for us. Bot with Troll, it's activated at end of turn. They discard a creature card. It's Golgari Grave Troll. Yep. Alright, so I guess killing the creatures doesn't matter anymore. They also discard Grave Shell Scarab. Yep, all that dredge stuff. Might as well start attacking off into the Carador player when we can. Snow Covered Plains in play on Carador's turn. Okay, let's see what they do with things. An Affins in that deck would probably be really good just so you can stop other people from recurring things. It looks like they also dredged. Yep, they dredged up the Golgari Grave Troll. Oh, we have a Hermit Druid. Man, they're all in on that graveyard. I mean... They would be, but I didn't know it'd be, you know, such strong effects, potentially. In any case, they do have Golgari Thug in the graveyard. That's really good. Shieldred, I don't mind seeing that stay there forever. We have a lot with Troll on the attack. It's off into the Morphon player. Damage is good. Morphon down to 31. Comes our turn. We get Ilharg. That'll be nice. Let's go ahead and play Snow Covered Mountain. Get down our commander's plate. And then we will attempt to equip it. Hopefully no one has a path. Or a swords, or something else. Nope. Okay, let's go ahead and attack into Carador. Damage is good, up to 6 commander, down to 34, let's pass it off. So just for reference, our commander has protection from everything that isn't red. Nice. Morphon itself is colorless, even though it has a 5 color, color identity. So, Morphon can block us, we will have to be very cognizant of that. Planes in play. Their lands tap for any color. More on the Boundless coming down for that player. The chosen creature type is Soldier. Hmm, I did not see that coming. Over to Carador's turn. I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep swinging into Carador. Maybe use Soul's Fire to get rid of the Morophon and keep Morophon down that way. Equip the Mask, go for Carador, and keep swinging at him. We cannot race them on damage so far. Grim Backwoods into play, by the way. Caradar Ghost Chieftain coming down. 3-4. Yeah, that, all that cost reduction. Their graveyard is already pretty filled up. Just, uh, what are we on? Turn 4? Not bad at all. We have an attack. Plot with into us. Yep, makes sense. No blocks. Damage is good. We are down to 35. Comes our turn. Bloodshot Cyclops is a card. Let's go ahead and play the Ghost Quarter. Never know when you might need that. Let's go and play... The Soul's Fire. We'll choose Arnie Broken Brow, choose Morphon, burn it out of existence. Morphon back to the command zone. Equip the Mask of Memory to Arnie Broken Brow. And we'll go ahead, lose some mana. I thought Equip was two, my mistake. And we'll swing at Carador. Damage is good, up to 12, Commander down to 28. Mask of Memory will trigger. We will agree to its May trigger. We get Turian Mauler and Fiendish Duo. Uh, I think at this point, let's get rid of the Turian Mauler. Alright, and we'll pass it off there. Over to Morophon's turn. Let's see if they can recast their commander. They would need one more land, I believe, or one more mana source. That's yeah, a land in play. That'll do just fine. Crows and Verge gets the crack. Morophon going to go get a Forest and Plains card. 
They get a Breeding Pool and a Temple Garden, both into play tapped. Obelisk of Erd coming down for the Marvon player. All right, so it does have Convoke. Unfortunately, they had no other creatures in play. When they enter the battlefield, they choose a creature type, and those creatures get 2-2. Two, two. Chosen type is Soldier. End of turn, Lotleth Troll. They're discarding another creature card. It's a Golgari Grave Troll. That probably means they're going to dredge some more. They do, in fact, do so. Golgari Grave Troll leaves the, the graveyard. Let's see, Shriek Maul of Grown Tomb. Yeah, unfortunately, if they get back to Shieldred, we're in a much rougher spot. So that's why I'm trying to kill Carador as soon as possible. Potentially. Oh, that's a bog. Okay. That's not terrible. They're going to target Morphon. Morphon's graveyard goes bye-bye. Druid is being activated. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card in your hand all others into the graveyard revealed this way. Ooh, that is a lot of cards. Glory. That's not good. I wonder what else they have. Do they have, like, uh, Filth and Valor? And potentially Brawn. I don't see any. Oh, they have Hogak in there. Hogak. Oh, man. I remember when that thing got banned. It was wrecking stuff. Not an EDH, mind you. I think it was standard. Oh, no. Not standard. That's not even a standard card. Hmm. Modern? Death Rat Shaman coming down. That's a good powerhouse card. Nice utility, anyway. Carador on the attack with Lotleth Troll and Carador. All right. So, Carador off into the more fun player. Lotleth into us. Okay. That works out. Uh, we will take the five. We go down to 30, Morphon down to 28. Comes our turn, we get a mountain. Let's go ahead and play it. And then, let's go ahead and play the Fiendish Duo. We will go to attacks, and attempt to take Carador out of the game. Mask of Mary will trigger Carador up to 24, Commander down to 16. Let's go ahead and draw some cards. Discard a Snow-Covered Mountain. And we'll pass it off. I'll order more of them. Turn five cards in hand after the draw. This uh, commander's plate, pretty good. We have Azusa lost but seeking. I did get one of those in the reprinted core set. Don't know if I'll make that my landfall commander or not. Time spiral. Okay, each player shovels their hand graveyard right into their library and then draws seven cards. You untap up to six lands. Uh, that's too bad. Did want Ilharg, but at least we got the Fiendish Duo down. Hammer of Nizan will be good. Smoke will be good. Now, Smoke's kind of like... I don't know how I feel about Smoke. It's, in this deck, it's kind of like Silent Arbiter for me. It's right on the cusp of I won't use it in most decks, though, because my first rule in Magic is people get to play Magic, and this is a really feel-bad card a lot of the time, so there is that. We also get Grafted Exoskeleton, so we are kind of set up for a win here immediately, just above. We have Progenitor Mimic. Uh-oh. Fiendish Duo. Yeah, it's going to be happening. That's a nice one. It's just going... I mean... They could hit us with like a 2-2 in a couple turns and we'd be dead. That's pretty ridiculous. Sylvan Library also coming down for the Morophon player. Alright, well, did not see the clone coming. That could be potentially very bad for us. Comes our turn, we get a mountain. Let's go ahead and play one. So I'm thinking this turn, Hammer of Nazan, attack, leave up mana for Arc Bond in case they attack with something. Could be good. Hammer of Nazan, let's go. We will equip it to Army Broken Brow. Let's go to attacks. All right, they go up to 19, down to 12. Mask of Memory will trigger. Down to 12, though, that's interesting. All right, we get Meteor Golem and Faithless Looting. Let's go ahead and discard Smoke. I don't think we're going to need that one all that quick. Well, that works out nicely. So yeah, let's just Souls Fire and call it a day, I guess. And there's the game. That was kind of ridiculous. I'm going to give the point to the Carador player. Man, I actually kind of feel bad now. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was pretty godly. I guess now we get to live up to the legend of Arnie Broken Bro. Oh, we get four points. That's nice of our points. Or the computer randomization, I suppose. One point off to the Carador player. All right, let's go take a look at the deck. All right, here's the deck. I have decided to now make this a double feature because the two games I recorded were kind of short. So here you go. Double feature. Yeah. Uh, no changes in between the two games. So uh, if you want to know what I did, maybe change the deck, go ahead and rewind about however long this game is and go take a look at that. Same message as before, though. If you saw anything you want for your own paper collection, you know, the few things we got to see. I, mean, I actually just kind of feel bad about it. But if you want to support the channel, go ahead and consider using our TZG Player affiliate link in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra by doing so. 
I guess this is kind of a weird thing. We're going to have kind of like four games of Arnie Broken Brow, but, uh, woo! Okay, going to work on the deck a little bit more. Probably need some more card draw. I mean, we got, that was like a god game as far as casual goes. Smoke I'm on the fence about. Might replace it. But anyway, I'm going to work on all that. Until the next Arnie Broken Brow video, I'll see you then. Stay safe.